morning and you're very welcome to this service. I want to welcome each one of you as we mourn together, celebrate together, but also encourage and comfort the family. Uh, we want to request the choir to continue singing songs of encouragement and uh, praise as we wait on a few things. I'll be letting you know.
again, you're welcome, and I request that we all stand as we begin the service. The choir will lead us as we turn to the order of service. our Father and our God, we do know that the strife will not be long. The day of battle is at hand. The victor's song is on, and to him that overcomes, a crown of life shall be, and he shall be with the King of glory, and shall reign eternally. God, we thank you that you've given us opportunity as sons and daughters of men to inherit the eternal kingdom with you. Father, you have given us the mandate and the grace to reign eternally with you, for we are your joint heirs and co-heirs in the kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for the life in which you have transitioned your son, Kenneth Kakuru. Father, thank you for the life that he has lived for you. Thank you for his outstanding testimony, Lord of salvation. For his faith, O oh God, in you, our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the grace that you've given him to serve. And now we give you glory as we stand together, Lord, mixed with the feelings of, 
of, of, of, of sorrow, feelings of grief and pain, Lord, we desire that you comfort us with the very words that you comforted Martha and Mary, that indeed you are the resurrection and the life, and those that believe in you will never die but will live forever. Father, that eternal grace that you've given to believers is what helps us to stand. And together we can say that your servant has fought the good fight. He has won the rest. And Lord, what is for him now is the eternal crown of glory. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. As we gather together, as your sons and daughters, Lord, we gather in that victory. Knowing that the one whom we are celebrating has come where he's supposed to be. Lord, will you challenge us this morning to remind us that eternity is the way for every believer. Thank you for the family, for our sister Charity and the rest of the children and the entire family, God. And those that uh, uh, your servant has touched. God, we are heartbroken, but we are not hopeless. Speak to us this morning in a voice that is clear. In Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Once again, I want to welcome you. Our condolences to you and Charity and the rest of the family. We pray that God will encourage you. I now want to welcome and introduce to you the main celebrant in this service is Grace, the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, the Most Reverend Dr. Samuel Stephen Kazimba, who is here with us. Your Grace, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for coming to be at this service. Uh, with us is the Right Reverend um, Eliphaz Murray, the retired bishop, assistant bishop of the Diocese of Kampala. Bishop, you're very welcome. We have uh, Reverend uh, Canon Freddy Komunda, the retired diocese and secretary of this diocese. We have the Reverend Canon Job Mbukule, the retired diocese and secretary of this diocese. We have Reverend Johnson Kansime, who is the, uh, the, the, the chaplain to His Grace, the Archbishop. We have Reverend Hilary Jaffu, who is the Assistant Provost, Reverend Canon Sentongwa, priest in charge of compassion, David Tumusime, our Vaja. We have the choir, and I'm Reverend Canon Dr. Rebecca Nyegenye, who will be leading this service. We all welcome you and pray that the Lord will comfort us all as we go through this service. Let's now continue with the service. I would like to request us to take our seats as we continue in prayer and before the presence of God this morning. On page 3 of the order of service, Jesus in John chapter 11 verse 25 to 26 said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, even though he dies, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And the Bible says in Job chapter 1 verse 21, We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And St. Paul writing to the church in Rome, Romans chapter 8 verse 38 to 39, said, for I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want us to take a moment and just reflect on your own life Close your eyes. Just ask the Lord to take you back into time. What is it that God wants you to correct in this season? Where does your faith stand in a time like this? Where is your hope in a time like this?
And together let us pray. That prayer just right at the bottom of page three is our Heavenly Father. In your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us through faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days that we may live as those who believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us rise and just proclaim Psalm 90 and declare it together as we say it together. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were born, or the earth and the world were brought to be, from eternity to eternity, you are God. You turn man back into dust, saying, Return to dust, you sons of Adam. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday passing, or like one watch of the night. You cut them short like a dream, like the fresh grass of the morning. In the morning it is green and flourishes. At evening it is withered and dried up. The span of our life is 70 years or 80 if we have the strength. Yet the span is but toil and sorrow, for it passes quickly away and we are gone. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Or satisfy us early with your mercy that our days we may rejoice and sing. Show your servants your work and let their children see your glory. May the gracious Father favor of the Lord, our God, be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands, or oh, prosper the work of our hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be found. Amen. Amen. You may take us. Amen. Let me invite uh, my brother George, the MC. Please do come and take us through the laying of the wreaths. Good morning, dear mourners. We welcome you all on this sad occasion, but at the same time, we'll be celebrating the life of Justice Uncle Kakuru. Um, to the Archbishop, the clergy, uh, all protocol observed. I will, um, for the interest of time, you're all very special guests, and so I'll start the program. It will start with the laying of the wreaths. We have numerous wreaths, but we'll uh, limit um, the list, and um, I will start, it will start as follows. We'll start with the widow, Auntie Charity. This will be followed by the children. Uh, this will be followed by the children. I'm sorry, by the siblings. John, Auntie Mary, this will be followed by Auntie Mary and Auntie Hilda.
These are the siblings. So then there's a special wreath for Auntie Mary and her family. nephews and nieces and then the generation X This will be followed by the Chief Justice. This will be followed by the Deputy Chief Justice. This will be followed by the Principal Judge. be followed by the Judicial Service Commission. Dania Cairo. Don Nia Kairu will be laying his wreath. George and Dorothy and Dehechire. And the family of Impede, Dr. Impede, Auntie Hilda, and the girls. This is the final wreath, which, be, which will be laid by 
John Patrick Amama Mbabazi. Your pardon, that was last but not least. We have the final wreath to be laid by the church. And it will be followed by the grandchildren, as had been insisted by their grandfather. Archbishop. That concludes the laying of the wreaths. I'll hand over to the clergy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's stand and continue in that song, It Is Well With My Soul, as we prepare for the reading of the word. Let's all stand.
Seats, I invite Rachel to come and take the first reading. Rachel. The first reading is taken from First Thessalonians 4 13 to 18. But I do not want to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring him, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the, by the word of the Lord, that we who, ha, who are alive and, re, and retain and remain until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the, trump, triumph, and with the trumpet of God. And the, dead in, and, the, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we, are, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 8, from verses 31 to 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall we not with him also freely? How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no height, no depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Thank you. We're going to stand and we sing the first stanza, the one stanza of great is your faithfulness as his grace comes to minister to us. Let's all stand and join in that song. Being reminded about the faithfulness of God even at such a moment as this. never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. I'll always wait for him. Come and speak and comfort us. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Mama Charity and his family members, Chief Justice and the team we are leading, every person here present in your capacity, we are all saddened by, in course, the homegoing of our friend, Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru. Sometimes uh, when we lose our resourceful people like this one, it makes me understand that uh, God is so supreme that nobody can challenge him. He does things at his own time and the way he wants. And so, sometimes we don't understand the watch God puts on. His watch is different. We cannot understand his mind. That's why Isaiah mentioned in Isaiah 55 verse 8 that his ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts, says the Lord. So it is very challenging for each one of us this morning to see that a great man is lying before us here. He's gone. But we thank the Lord for his faith and the commitment the Lord and his contribution to our nation, also to the church. We as clergy, we have been so proud of him as a son of a clergy. 
because many times uh, children of the clergy they decide to take different ways but this one has followed it like uh, and his wife these are children of clergy and little readers so I want to thank God for people like there are many others here children of clergy we are so grateful but uh, sometimes I visit schools and you you want to meet the children of the clergy they are hiding they don't want to be seen so a man like just Kenneth has really stood the test of children of clergy he has served well with integrity and uh, he has been a man of his word uh, at one time he was also a member of a choir in the Anglican frames he was singing here so I want to thank God that uh, he didn't forget where well, you know when you're a child of a, a clergy reader every morning you begin with the prayers and uh, evening prayers so sometimes with children of clergy they get tired ah, we are tired of that when they become independent they, ah, they leave that aside but he joined the choir and he contributed a lot to the beginning of father's union of this church let us clap for him and so father zinion you remember him he was a key member and he was one of the founder of father zinion and the main contributor of father zinion in this cathedral so i want to thank god for his contribution but also he was a, a chancellor of uh, Ankole diocese a legal advisor and he contributed a lot he also served as a uh, you know, on, on a provincial assembly, which is our parliament, and the provincial assembly standing committee, which is actually the one doing the technical work and important work of the church. And uh, he contributed to uh, a resolution in our constitution, it is Article. 13 6 it says a bishop shall retire after serving for a period of 15 years upon attaining the age 65 years or whichever comes first so he was so keen on the things of retirement <laughs> even the church i was there in the province <laughs> And I debated, they debated. I was there, a bishop of, uh, from Mitiana, and he said, no, bishops, bishops shouldn't overstay. They should retire. So bishops, uh, you, you enter the office at the age of 45, and uh, you retire at 65. But it's, no, no, it should be reduced. And uh, actually, I suggested that uh, no person should become a bishop until he attains 50. But uh, I was there and said, no, because you want a, a younger country. We have many younger people. If uh, it is 50, 55, we for tablets, for issues. Resolved that uh, an archbishop should be in the office for 10 years or whichever comes first. You, you, 10, 
had served for seven and a half years, and on 15th August 2027, at 10 a.m., I'll retire. <laughs> So he brought his sanitary in the church. No, no conflict. I know when I'm retiring, and I, now after this, to, we are going to be in Lukunjiri. Uh, and I'll be handing over a pastor's staff to Bishop Eric Onesimus Asim. And I know when he retire, when he, somebody enters my office, ever a bishop, no, you became a bishop on this day, you retire on such a day. So it's no. This man he was soaking in, in this. I think he did it since he was a son of a clergy. He knew how tasking this office is. So he didn't want the clergy to overstay. This is the man. I'm sure others will be talking about his contribution in the legal fraternity. They will do that. I will not do that. But uh, we want to thank God for his contribution. He was a, a believer and the one who loves Jesus Christ. For sure, his word, his word was his word. He was always speaking the truth and uh, nothing but the real truth. <laughs> so we pray for the family. The Lord will take care of you. The Lord is our shepherd. The Lord will not abandon you. He says in Hebrews 13 verse 5, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So may God take care of the family and all of us. The Chief Justice is here. We are meeting for a certain uh, consultation. And he told me something, because I was calling him and you and other land friends of yours. And he told me that, no, actually there are three land people and recognized people from history. Doctors, they are land. Because a doctor is the one who makes the last report on your life. Doctors, very important. Recently, I went for the routine medical checkup so that I keep this size and, you know, checkup is very important. So now, the doctor came in a special room, said, would you please remove your clothes? I said, hey, this man doesn't know that I'm an archbishop. <laughs> doesn't matter. He's in, he's in charge. He's a doctor. Remove the collar. You remove. Don't, tell, don't ask how many clothes did you remove. It is a secret. But the doctor was in charge. This time, the doctor was a man. There was a time when the doctor was a lady. She doesn't matter. She doesn't care. You must obey the doctor. So you people, Routine checks are very important. And you must be obedient to a doctor because a doctor is a doctor. So a doctor is a land person. Another land person, of course, these are lawyers, judges, land. But another one, according to this lecture from Chief Justice, he told me the clergy are land people. <laughs> Because the Bible is the supreme book of law. The Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. Chief Justice, uh, I, actually, I should leave the pulpit and come and preach that sermon. <laughs> you, you preach to me. And I learned that uh, after the doctor has done the work, after lawyers have done the work, the last person now, is the clergy on your life. But there is another, another thing. God is the supreme judge. You will stand before the judge. Every one of us will stand before the chief justice of heaven. 
His name is God. And he will judge us accordingly. When we read, we read Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it, the earth and the heavens fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, before the judge, and the books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. <laughs> you know, these judges, they are people of books. There are many books. This book, I am just imagining now, Chief Justice of Heaven, opening books, books and books, and they say, where is this one? Maybe you check in the book of the adulterers. Maybe his name is there. They check, no, you may check in that book of those who are practicing witchcraft. Maybe this person might be there. How about the, the books of those who are not faithful? So, and, but there is a book of life. Ask your neighbor, where do you think your name will be? Which book? It's a challenge. It's a challenge. Actually, each one of us must appear in a book. And that book is very important. When the supreme judge stands and he calls everyone, where will your name be? Where will you be? There is actually a conference which flopped. In, uh, 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 <laughs> this conference, they invited a conference and uh, somebody, and uh, they arranged it very well. It was uh, a conference for men who have never cheated their wives. <laughs> that conference flopped. <laughs> Only two people showed up. <laughs> they had prepared for 500 people. Only a few people. Let me request you to ask that man near you, would you be there here? <laughs> there is a book for adulterers, and they will be there. And the book of life was opened. So as we be the fellow to this man who has been a man of books, I want to bring a challenge to all of us. Where will your name be? But there are some women who are also cheating their husbands. <laughs> <laughs> they are not many, but they are there. None of them came today. <laughs> Peace. Each one of us will give accountability before God. Each one of us will give accountability before God what we have done this world. There will be accountability. And none of us will escape with me inclusive. All of us. And uh, let me remind you, one day all of us will die. Actually, we have already started dying, but we die in phases. So now, when I wake up in the morning, I put on glasses to read the Bible, and I discovered, oh, I have started dying slowly. <laughs> when you see anybody putting on glasses, he has started <laughs> slowly but sure.
I was studying in the States, and Winter found me that it was too cold in Michigan, so I lost a tooth. And I, oh, oh, I've started again. If you lost a tooth, you started it already. When you see anybody with a bald head losing hair, that one started. When you see anybody with white hair, white hair, that means you have started slowly but sure. You are dying. But here is a good message. Death is not the end. There is life after that. Especially for those who accepted Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Master of all Masters, who know Him as Savior and Lord. He has the message and the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. So, we'll give accountability, but we have a way by accepting Jesus. Jesus is the judge at the same time he's our advocate. In the judge, you, you cannot do it your own. You need an advocate to help you. You need Jesus is your advocate and he's the judge. Blessed are those who have discovered the secret of knowing Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. Whatsoever come what may, let it be life or death, they have life after. And that's the message here. Giving accountability. So now, what should we do? Let us be mindful of the judgment day and live a life of integrity. Amen. Let us be truthful. Because there's a time when all the secrets will be revealed and no one will hide. Let us be truthful. Let us always remember we should really be faithful to God and to one another. And now we have a challenge of uh, homosexuals. Uh, I heard they, <coughs> they, they are bringing the bill again. And now I think I want to be in the parliament and uh, see my Anglican is the members of parliament, whether they will say yes or no. I want to be there. Tell your neighbor, are you hearing what the Archbishop is saying? <laughs> <laughs> because some people may want to eat the money and hide and kill our nation. We shouldn't accept that because it's our country. We need to save our children. We shouldn't accept that. And this time when it comes to courts of law, don't cancel it. <laughs> don't cancel it. Uh, pray the Lord. Listen to this. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Solomon says, At the end of the day, there will be opening of the books. There will be opening of the books. And so, May the Lord help us to do the following. We recognize that we as human beings, we can't do it in our own. We need Jesus. Two, let us remember there is judgment. So let us try, by his grace, do what he requires of us. Especially integrity. Integrity. So justice should be followed. Law should be obeyed. And those who sit in big seats, like judges, when judges sit there, ah, somebody whom we have been conversing with here, he goes and puts on, ah, say, is this man really God? You are representing God. Always, always do the right thing. Because one day, you will also be judged. And all of us. Realize that God is there. Let us judge rightly. Above all, let us have a relationship with Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Your Grace, for that message that has encouraged us, but also challenged us to live right with God. I want to request us to bow our heads in prayer.
And for each one of us, the Bible says that we have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If a book is opened, which book will your name be? If books are set aside right now, each one of us is aware where our name is written. You fall somewhere. But the opportunity is there that you can transfer your name now from the book of death to the book of life. Any sin that sends you to the book of death. Yes, his grace has reminded us that books can be opened and they can look for your name among the drunkards. They can get your name among the fornicators, among the adulterers, among those who are unfaithful in your marriages. These books are going to be opened. We can laugh about it, but sin is killing this nation. Sin is killing offices. Sin is killing institutions. Let us submit to the Lord and surrender ourselves to the Lord this morning and allow the Lord to operate in our hearts. Confusion and corruption begins with us. When we do not surrender our lives to Jesus, we set a precedence for the death of this nation. Issues of homosexuality, it is our organizations and our hearts that have yielded to homosexuality and allowed organizations to operate. We have allowed cheap popularity in our lives, eating money that we know has its origin in sin. Shall we surrender our hearts to the Lord and allow God to speak to us this morning? That this message that has been shared with us is not going to go in vain. We are witnessing the funeral of a man of integrity, a man who has lived. Yes, he has been highly placed, but also highly placed in the courts of heaven. Will you only be highly placed in the courts of this earth, and yet you've rejected the courts of heaven? The Lord is your judge. He is the king, he is the lawmaker, he is the judge, and yet he is the savior. This morning he is not coming to you as a judge. He is coming to you as a savior. The Bible says that Jesus Christ he came in the first time to deal with the sin. But when he comes the second time, he is coming to take those that are waiting for him. Will you be taken because you are waiting? Are you waiting for the Lord or you are doing your own things? Think about your office and think about how many people you have co corrupted and confused. You a gentleman, think about the ladies that you have devastated in your office. They live in fear when you come, you're like an animal before them. Just open your heart to the Lord this morning, friends. The gospel is like fire that should burn our hearts. That we should live a life of integrity, a life of respect, a life of truth. A life that respects one another's space. A life that honors the Lord. Friends, you have an opportunity this morning. The reality and the truth is that you will never enter heaven without Jesus Christ. He's the only way, he's the only truth, and he's the only life. Believing in him... It's not just a choice that you want to abandon. It's a choice that you have to make because one day you will die. And when you die, where will your life be? The essence of us being in church is the gospel. Father, we give you thanks this morning. Lord, you have spoken. Paul says that I will not be ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of the Lord to save. Lord, we can never be ashamed of the gospel. The word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. Father, we thank you for the gospel. We thank you for the cross. For it is the only power that moves a sinner from the book of death to the book of life. Lord, we surrender to you. 
we have sinned against you. But Lord, this morning we choose to obey your voice. That Lord, this day will make a true transformation. That if we can ever celebrate Justice Kakuru, then we can celebrate him through our obedience to Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father and our God, we surrender to you. What an opportunity for us this morning to hear your voice. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you honor. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's thank his grace for ministering to us this morning. Thank you so much, your grace. Shall we all stand and affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed? And it is on page 8. On page 8. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll take our seats. We are going to take time to give our offering to the Lord. And let us give generously back to the Lord as we support the family uh, during this trying time. And the choir will be leading us in songs.
Thank you so much, Your Grace. Shall we take our seats, please? Um, right now, I'm going to ask our MC once again to come and take us through uh, his speeches. Uh, thank you. Your Grace, thank you again for that uh, inspiring yet intriguing sermon. We noticed that the front view over here seemed to have laughed the most. But thank you again, Your Grace, uh, for that light moment. Uh, the next item on the program is uh, speeches. We'll have very few speeches. But before we go into the speeches, I just wanted to invite my co MC. Uh, who will um, just acknowledge messages of condolence that have come in. Uh, Victor, first, uh, Victor and Sam. Victor is the nephew to the late uh, Justice Kakuru, who just flew in from uh, Ottawa, Canada. So you can uh, please uh, recognize the messages. Thank you, OMC. Um Justice Kakuru, Uncle, Uncle, Uncle KK, as we used to call him, worked at the Court of Appeal. And we have members of the judiciary and the legal fraternity present, and would like to recognize some of the dignitaries amidst us. We have Chief Justice, Honorable Justice Alphonse Chigamoy Owenidolo. We have the Deputy Chief Justice, his Honorable Justice Richard Butera, head of the Court of Appeal, where Uncle Kakuru Justice Kenneth Kakuru worked. We have the Minister of Internal Affairs, Major General Retired Kahinda Otafire, who was also the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs when Justice Kakuru Kenneth was appointed as a judge. We have Right Honorable Amam Mbabazi, Prime Minister Emeritus and his wife. <laughs> to save on time, we, we clustered the judiciary in clusters of justices of the Supreme Court. We would like you to stand up for recognition. <laughs> justices of the Court of Appeal who held session yesterday in honor of their brother, Justice Kenneth Kakuru, Justices of the Court of Appeal, thank you very much. In Amidist, we have the Chairperson of the Judicial Service Commission, Honorable Justice Benjamin Kabito. Amidist us, we have the Principal Judge, who is the head of the High Court, and Justice Dr. Zezia. We have judges and ju judges of the High Court of Uganda. Please stand up for recognition. We, amidst us, we have retired justices of Court of Appeal Supreme Court and judges retired of the High Court. Please stand up for recognition. The Permanent Secretary of the Judiciary, Dr. Pass Bijirimana. One of the instrumental people who helped put this all together on behalf of the Judiciary, Chief Registrar of the Judiciary, Her Worship Sarah Langa Siu. Registrars of the different courts, Judiciary staff, and lawyers, you may stand up in that order. Registrars. <laughs> Judiciary staff and those from the Court of Appeal, especially here. Thank you very much. Before 2013, Justice Kenneth Kakuru was a practitioner in practice. So could we have the lawyers present stand up for Recognition. Thank you very much. 
Um, yesterday we were told by His Lord, the Honorable Chief Justice, that Uncle Kakuru sought leave to retire. However, that application was not granted. I think the legal mind in him decided to appeal that decision to a higher court. And his Lord granted him leave. Leave has been granted. Rest in peace, Justice Kakuru. Before we begin with the speeches, I'd just like to quickly note, um, I am Uncle Kakuru's nephew and his godson from Ottawa, Canada, but for who Uncle Kakuru was to me, not being able to see him as often because of how far we were, just the conversations we'd ever have, he'd always be such a positive influence, and I'd like to think he's someone who's really influential in shaping the human being and the man that I am today, and after hearing from everyone about how much he's been really great and impactful in the church and the community. It really makes me want to reevaluate to be a better father, husband, member of my community in order just to make sure that his legacy will live on through my actions, not just my words. So, uh, we received a letter of condolence from Honorable Justice Benjamin Cabito, Chairperson, Judicial Service Commission. We received a letter of condolence from Uganda Golf Club, Captain Emmanuel Wamala. Thank you, Victor. We also received a message of condolence from the law firm of James Nangwala, Alex Rezida, and Richard Bayo. And they also enclosed the contribution of one million shillings. We also received a message of condolence from the managing partner of KAA, uh, Joseph Masiko, with a contribution of two million shillings. And we also received a condolence message from Ambassador Mumtaz Kasim with a closure of 500,000 Ugandan shillings. So without further ado, I'll invite the widow, Auntie Charity, to come and give a speech. Judge. All protocol observed. I would like to thank God for Pabs' life. Uh, and the blessing of, of having lived a purpose of full life, uh, whether to his family, country, uh, and church, where he encouraged me especially to keep attending church every Sunday, no matter what, 7.30 here, our place. I want to thank God for my beautiful family, most especially Aunt Maria. I can't thank you enough, Aunt Maria. You've been a mother to me. When Sweetie fell sick, 2021, April, 
You left your home, you left your work, you stayed with us, with me, with pups and the girls, till the end. Thank you for the girls. Pups is army, as he said. Thank you for being one, for loving me. Thank you, Joe. Where is Joe? Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Roland. Ray. My journey with my sweetie, as I called him, started 11 years ago. All I can say, I can kund. And I fell in love with him, with his good looks. You can all see <laughs> his height, the way he carried himself, his smile, his scent, <laughs> and even his gray hair. <laughs> He kept on asking me, can I dye my hair? Can I dye my hair? And I'm like, oh my God, you're just a full package. <laughs> and uh, I told him, no, you don't need to. I loved him and I loved him and I will always love you. Uh, uh, ours has been a beautiful journey where where he would have picked anyone else who was more social and financially established, but he chose me. I would like to thank him for choosing me, loving me unconditionally. Pups, sweetie, Kantetsa. You think my knuckle? I really think German. Can't wear and come on away, on ban and can no more. And I can kunda ya kunda nabit. Candy abacor. There's nothing that he didn't do for me. Personally, I had it all. Uh, he supported me, supported my father, my mother's family in any way needed, despite of our age difference. Uh, I learned a lot of skills in relation to work and people. My sweetie was one of a kind. We enjoyed working together on a personal level, regardless of his title. Status outside the home, like bathing Lucy. Looked forward to going home, bathing Lucy, playing with her toy guns, drawings, <laughs> washing clothes. <laughs> I guess you, you will see. Uh, Ironing clothes, <laughs> you've seen the pictures. He didn't find any problem with that. Whenever housemaids left, help us, he made it so easy for me. He would say, Tafayo, today that hook take. We can order. <laughs> but of course, I would not allow that. I would make sure I make his a uh, best dish, Oburo. <laughs> and uh, he was so, he was so exceptional that he didn't believe things couldn't get done, even if it was fixing anything around the house or sharing solutions to any kind of dilemma that I had or facing 
To me, Sweetie was a superman who gave me all the, the security, the protection, that I had no any fear. Sweetie was so transparent to the point as a family, we all had access to his ATM cards, the girls, uh, his phone. <laughs> Lucy, I guess, used it as her iPad anytime her iPad blacked out. He knew perhaps his phone would be there for her. Grandchildren, <laughs> uh, house plans, titles, future. We knew where they were. There was nothing to hide. There was nothing to hide. And this made it so easy for me during this period of time when he was unwell. As I was able with the girls to access the funds when supporting him. Nienda kusima, sweetie. For how selfless he was. Uh, to the children and I from summer uh, uh, to Lucy uh, as for Lucy I really have no words Papa's princess. Yep. Uh, I'll miss him. I'll miss us. The girls will miss you. Uh, having to share with you. Lucy and the twins about your legacy and the great man that you are. I'm so proud of you and I'm proud to be your wife. I'll try my best to carry on your legacy with the children, with the children, and to be the best mom, grandma, I can be, with God being my guide, with God being my guide. I'll miss you, my sweetie, from your, mo from your morning greetings to our daily texts. <laughs> I guess every, every minute he would be texting me. Uh, I'm going to court. I'm out of court. I'm going for lunch. Uh, I'm on my way home. I'll miss all that. I'll always love you and holding on to the memories that we shared together with the family. I'll do my best. I'll do all the things that you told that you loved, most especially staying in church. Not just church, but Anglican church. Not any church, Anglican church. Insima Mkama, Ruhanga, very much, Kumpo, Omcha, Okuraz, Santa Kwemchireho. Till the end. Uh, Rest in peace, my love. Rest in peace, my sweetie. 
I'll miss you till we meet again. Thank you very much, Anti Charity, for those sweet words. I must say we are blessed. We thank God for the blessing of rain as we send forth um, family patriarch. Uh, please bear with us. I think we are doing well in terms of time. Just want to recognize a few more condolence messages that have come in. And also to recognize in our, in our midst is a very good friend uh, to the late, uh, Honorable Anifa Kawea. Please stand for recognition. Thank you for joining us. And then condolence messages have also come in from uh, the Rabarita family, Kawaja International, Kituma Magala Patrick Grace, the late Paul and Mrs. Angelica Kadoma, UCU Law Class of 2009, the Xavi family, KTA Advocates, Dr. Timiewa and family, the Katuramu family, Legal Aid Service Providers Network, and the CSCO Accord. And there's also um, a condolence message from the class of 1979 and 82. These were uh, Justice KK's uh, classmates. I'll quickly read out their names. Justice Musota, Justice Adonio, Justice Sarah Nkonge, Justice Cheborion, Justice Wolayo, Professor Joe Onyango, Donald Nyakairo, Richard Kaijesa, and Sarah Babidye. I'm my co MC. A couple of other letters of condolences from the ALP advocates, the head of the ALP East Africa, Francis Guimara, and from the Chambers of Justice, Percy Knight Tuhasi, from the Supreme Courts, Justice of the Supreme Court, Percy Knight Tuhasi, with a letter of condolence. Oh, thank you, Victor. A couple more messages. One is from the Civil Society Coalition on Oil and Gas, signed by the chairperson, Tuesi J. Bashir. Uh, the other one is uh, from the Green Watch, which uh, Justice Kakuru uh, represented here in Uganda. And then finally, um, from his law firm that he co-founded, Kakuru and Company Advocates. Uh, thank you for the condolence messages. Next, we'll invite the children uh, to give their speech. Samantha, Tracy, Rose, Lucy. In times like this when it's hard, it's definitely hard to stand here and speak. I was negotiating with my sister over here, asking her to speak first, but she kept giving me that eye. At a point like this, the emotions are high, the pressure to speak, to say the right things. Also dealing with grief. But I'll do my best. What I'm going to say is not for daddy. God in his mercy gave me the time to be able to tell him everything that I needed to tell him. And I thank God for that. This morning I celebrate a man a man I was privileged to call, to have as a father, and most importantly, as a friend. I've often heard in the different um, memes that come on social media, there were two prominent gentlemen. One was T.D. Jakes, the other was um, Steve Harvey. And they were having a conversation about their children and what they want to leave to them. And T.D. Jakes said, it's not about what you leave for your children. The Bible tells us that a good man leaves that inheritance for his children. But it's not about what you leave for them. It's really about what you leave in them. Because that gives them the push. In 1998, Daddy always used to come for, he always used to have church programs. 
So every after school, we knew we were coming to All Saints. That particular week was a mission week, and they had um, church every day. It was a Wednesday, so I came with him, and the preacher that day delivered a very powerful sermon that really touched me. And um, I was in P6, and that altar call was made, and I came to the front and I gave my life to Christ. And in that, in that moment, I really didn't take it as a big deal, but when I turned, I was around here. When I turned, I saw my dad running from there, coming to hug me and said, Summer, you gave your life to Christ, you gave your life to Christ. And I was wondering, what's the big deal? <laughs> but that was the beginning of my journey with the Lord. And I, 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 I thank you, I thank, I, thank, I thank my dad for making that initiation, for initiating that. I've never looked back. And for me, yeah, that is what he's left in me and that's what's going to keep me going. I really didn't write a speech. I really didn't write a speech, so um, I just wanted to reflect on the kind of father that he was. When I was growing up, my bedroom was opposite his, and he woke up really early, and then he would start singing. Great is thy faithfulness. And you're in bed, and you're like, why? But that would always be our, our wake-up call. Like, every time Daddy woke up, he sang. That was just how he was. And I'm happy that I shared that. Every night, every night, even when we were adults, he would come in the middle of the night and touch our faces. So you just feel a hand touching your face. And every time we were sick, he would tell us to sleep in his room so that he would watch over us. And when I was going to law school, I actually wasn't going to law school. I told him I wanted to do performing arts. I wanted to be an actress on Broadway. <coughs> so I looked for the university. It was in South Africa. I had made the application and I presented my case. And then he looked at me and he said, you know what? For me, I'm not going to pay for you to do a course that's not professional. He said, law is good because if, when you do law, after that, you can be an actor if you want. So he said, he. He didn't force me, he encouraged me to do law. And I did, and I excelled, and I've never looked back. <laughs> Not that I don't have the aspirations of being an actress, that's still there, but well, <laughs> life took a different path. So that is how most people have the assumption that if either, you know, I was influenced, coerced or anything like that. No, but it was just an encouragement. And um, when he was appointed a judge, I was working in South Africa, but I had had my first child, so I was home. That's how daddy was. He would, you know, wake up in the morning, say, no, you sleep, let me take care of the baby. He would take care of my baby. We had a fight, a conversation about not to give the baby plain water with sugar because he felt that that would help the colic. But I did not think so, but what did I know? So one time he took the baby from me, told me to sleep and gave my baby water with sugar. And the baby slept and I slept as well. So that was the kind of father he was. My children, our children with my husband are going to miss him. He was such a good grandpa. My eldest son had gotten to a point where he was so interested in football, so they would watch the football game together. I think I will stop at this point and hand over to my sister, Tracy. Praise God. Uh, my name is Tracy Kakuro Tatina, and I am here to talk about the greatest of all time. So many people know um, Pops in many different ways. He had diff many different names. Um, people called him KK, Uncle KK. Ken, I think some of his friends, 
grandpa. Um, of course, Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru, his lordship. Uh, but to us, we, we called him Paps. So in his uh, profession, um, in the judiciary, in his legal profession, as a human rights and environmental activist, as a pillar in the church, um, in education, as a sibling and as, uh, and as a friend, um, he left a very big impact in everyone's life. He was an overachiever, he was not forgettable, um, and he excelled in all these things. So you can only imagine um, what he was like in one of the most important roles that he had, and that was being a dad to us. Um, the greatest gift my dad gave us was his love and his life lessons. He was a very loving and intentional parent. Looking back on my childhood, um, I know it was very exceptional and it was filled with happiness and joy when he told me about, when he, he kept on telling us stories individually about our childhood. He told me a story when, you know, before, like two days before I was born, he wrote a letter to my mom and he said, you know, I had a dream that she gave back to a baby girl in Nairobi, so he sent this letter. And by the time he sent this letter, um, I think my mom received it, she had already given birth to me, and he proceeded to tell me by the time he reached Nairobi, um, I was already born, they didn't even know that he was the dad, because I think my uncle was there before. Um, he told us different stories about our lives. Um, he told me my first birthday I stood up, um, cut the cake, I grabbed the knife, cut the cake. He kept our clothes from when we were young. He has all our report cards, birthday cards, success cards. He kept all these memories alive for us because he had a vision that these were not only pictures and memories, they were lessons. When I look back at my baby pictures in Nairobi Hospital, I see a parent with love I see a very well-accomplished well father who endeavored to have his wife give birth in a good hospital at the time. When I look back at my first day of primary school, and when I look back, I don't mean I remember. I mean he told me what happened, and I also have the picture evidence to prove it. Because everyone thinks I love pictures, but he, he loved taking pictures. So I, I have a picture when some other is holding my hand, and I was going to P1W. And um, when I look back at that first day, I feel pride. I feel the pride and love that he had to watch me take such a small step in my life, but in that moment, he made it absolutely important and special. I see that he taught my sister, Sama, to look out for us and care for us, and she has continued to do so till this day. He has created countless memories of our childhood, and he told them to us so vividly. And like I said, he had the picture evidence to prove it. You know, he said, I don't trust these phones. Make sure you print out all these pictures, get hard copies and, and have them. Because he knew that one day I would be 33 years old. I would have my own children. And I would understand that being a parent is about being intentional with your acts of love. And the childhood is very important. It's a very important stage that most definitely molds um, someone's future self. Pops was extremely overprotective over us. I wouldn't say overprotective, extremely protective over us. He was our superhero that would come to our rescue whenever we asked. I remember in primary school, uh, we never would get punished for, you know, not writing good news or not having a hunk, like things you are not supposed to get punished for. Um, we would hide it from him because we were scared for the teachers. <laughs> so one day he found out, he didn't care what I did. He woke up very early, went to the deputy's office and told them, you know, like with a finger, never touch my child again. If you want, it, if you want to punish someone, punish your own children but never punish my child again. And being young, I thought it was embarrassing because I never saw other parents do that. 
other kids maybe thought were different and that's weird. But today, now that I have my, my own kids, you had better not punish my child. <laughs> better have your own kids, but don't touch my child. <laughs> um, he was our he was our confidant. Um, we had him. It was pups and the girls. Um, so we used to when we used to stay in Imbria, and we all used to stay at home at the time. We used to take walks with him to Bugolobi to the trading center. And if we wanted to share something like something personal, we would time him. So we would say he would tell us, "Oh, girls, I'm going for a walk. Do you want to come?" So we'd go. So this particular time. We went with him. It was the three of us. We went with him. So some are, I'm going to tell this story, but yeah. So um, so Samantha, I could I could see them talking. So she proceeded to tell him that you know what, Daddy, I have a stalker. There is this person from church, and he's been following me. He sends me messages. He's stalking me, and I've seen him. He's here. So she confided in him. Sorry. She confided in him about her fears. And without a word, he asked, where is he? Then uh, obviously, again, with a finger, stay away from my daughter. If, you, if I ever see you or hear from you again, I will end you. I don't care where you are, I'll find you and I'll end you. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys have watched um, Taken. He's like the Niam Lison. Liam Neeson's character in Taken. So if we were ever taken, just watch that movie. That's exactly how Pops would be. <laughs> um, so at that moment, like different people were surrounding and you know, people are cheering, people are asking what's going on. And then he walked off. And then, you know, I remember looking at Rose like, wow, Pops is so dope. Oh my God, like, you can't mess with us. So, um, and in that, of course, was a lesson. He was the only person on earth that loved us, that loved us so much. He loved us more than himself. To me, there was God the Father in heaven, and to us, Pops felt like the representation, representation of God in human form. He's the person God sent to us to guide us, protect us, teach us, love us. We also never lacked uh, we knew we could depend on him for anything. Um, he bought all of us our first cars. Um, he made sure he took us at least two steps forward. So he would not give us our first cars and give us fuel, then service them. Then we, he spoiled us, but we are definitely not spoiled. And um, so there's a time when he did that. He gave, he gave me my first car. But then, you know, one time I was driving and I see smoke coming out of the bonnet and I park, I'm like, what's going on? The guy is like, when was the last time you serviced your car, madam? I'm like, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't know. So, of course, I could not call him, but I had to figure it out for myself. So I called his mechanic. I called, I think, my cousin Dennis. I figured it out. So when I went home, I told him, like, oh, by the way, this happened to me. Then he was like, uh-huh, what did you do? So I told him, and he was like, good, like, good, like, keep it up. I'm glad you figured it out. You didn't call me. So with all those lessons, he would just give us a few steps, and then we would continue. So like Auntie Charity said, we had his ATM cards when he would, he would be um, gone. Like, um, he would go to Imbara, he would leave us with his ATM, he would tell us, you know, go to Nakawa Market, you know what to do, buy things for the home, manage the home when I'm not around. And because our mom had passed away, he could have easily told, you know, a house help to do that or someone else to do that, but he wanted us to do that for ourselves. Because, again, he had a vision that would be um, grown women of our own and would need to maintain and... Um, maintain our households. We are not easily impressed by material things because he taught us that what lies within us is the most important thing. Um, 
He also taught me and all of us a lot about love and relationships. Um, with our mom, I would watch him plan surprises for her. He would blindfold her and walk her out of the house and, you know, there would be like maybe like a car or a gift in the parking. He would plan surprise dinners for her. He would bring for her gifts when he traveled. He was a very, very affectionate and loving husband, which was very important to us, the girls, to see. Um, and when he was sick, he did everything he could. When she was sick, he did everything he could for her until, um, until she passed away. But even after that, every single year, for 12 years, we celebrated her life with a Thanksgiving service. And right now, her resting place in, in Rev Shuri, our the family home, was very beautifully designed by him. He was very intentional on how he wanted it to look like because she knew, uh, he knew that she loved roses and flowers. So he planted all these roses and flowers for her with his hands and his, he poured his heart out into this project to have, to have her resting place, something very beautiful, even in death, even 12 years, 10 years later, he was still doing those things. So last year, he called me and he said he had just come back from Seattle after treatment and he called me and said I have a plan I'm like what is it I can help you so he wanted to buy for Auntie Charity another ring they had been married for 10 years for 11 years at this point and he wanted to buy for her a ring he told me exactly where to go we started planning scheming you know I had to find out her ring size like it was a whole project I would send him pictures of different rings to approve and we set this plan like we're going to surprise her. So they had had a rough couple of years up from his diagnosis through the chemo but they also had a great couple of years and so many memories to share. His appreciation and love for her was seen until his last day. Um, Auntie Charity never left his side in the good times, in the extremely difficult times. She never left his bedside in hospital. Um, she has six month old twins that she hasn't seen in almost two months, but she never left his side. So she would tell us, you guys you can't sleep, but I'm going to be here with, with daddy. So she would sit by his bedside, hold his hand throughout the night, like clockwork. My pups, thank you for the love. Thank you for your stories and lessons. I'm so heartbroken. Um, I don't know this life without you. You knew you were everything to me. When he was diagnosed in um, 20, 2021, I had to make sure. I, I went with him and Auntie Charity to Dubai, but I had to make sure because I knew, I know perhaps he's, he's going to try and protect me. He's going to try and sugarcoat this whole situation, but I need to know. So I literally forced myself in the room but at that moment, when we got the news, I literally felt like my life was over. But from that moment on, as a family, we did a 360. We became extremely intentional with our relationship with each other and our relationship with Pops. We would stay, we would alternate with the girls when he had his treatment. We'd stay one week with him at home. Rose would come stay the whole week. Someone would come and stay the whole week. We always had the grandchildren over. He would call me sometimes and say, you hey, Tracy, you haven't called your pups in two days. Come and see me. And of course, I would gladly come because there was nothing more important to me. Um, so my sister and I, Rose, um, we just had our babies in Feb, early Feb. They're one month old and he was in Nairobi. Um, with treatment. So at this point, we slowly had many more contact with him. We were not talking to him on the phone, we were just talking to 
Samantha and Auntie Charity. But um, when my son had to, he had to be in the, the NICU for 11 days and I could not get pups on the phone or I, he wasn't calling me, he wasn't fixing everything, calling the hospital, asking what's going on or even leaving and just coming. I definitely knew something was terribly wrong because that wasn't him. That wasn't him at all. So three weeks later, we both left our, our newborns and we went to see him. He had no idea that we were coming. We went to see him and then we got an understanding of what was really happening. So perhaps I'm honored and I'm glad that we were there for you at the time you needed us the most. We made very hard decisions that we didn't think were capable of. We came to terms with his passing days before it happened. And we ensured that it was the most peaceful and painless transition. He looked at us and he looked at all of us in the room. It was Auntie Charity, it was Auntie Maria. Summer Rose and I, and he told the nurse, this is my army, this is my army. And as if to reassure us that I trust you, I trust you with handling all this, and gave us the confidence that we needed, that we were much stronger than we thought, and it was all because of him. So, um, I said everything I had to say to him, I held your hand and knelt by your bedside. And I told you we were going to be okay. And for everything you were, everything you taught us, we're your army and the fight continues. So we joked, we just joked and said that, you know, pups wouldn't want us to look so bad and, you know, he hated, you know, he liked us to represent him. So we made sure even with all the grief, we had to get our nails done here yeah, because if he was around, <laughs> he would definitely tell us, you're not serious, that hair, yeah, no. So a few weeks before he passed, I asked him to name my son and he named him Atwine. And he explained to me that, he's explained to me the name, of course it means God is with us. And I take it as the last lesson that he gave to me. So God is with us, perhaps is with us. Uh, I love you, I love you forever, perhaps, until we meet again, thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Rosie Chiriza Kakuru Ngabo. I am Papsi's baby. Okay, before, <laughs> before Lucy, I was his baby for, for, for quite some time. And he always treated me like that. Like, for me, I'm going to speak as Rose, daddy's baby. <sighs> yeah. Daddy, he loved us. He loved us. He loved us so dearly. Um, he cared for us so deeply. He got to know our friends. He loved them. He had a relationship with them, with many of them. Um, he, he really took the time to get to know us as, as people and as his daughters, especially after, pap after mommy passed, um, we got that opportunity to, to get really close to him. And yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to be <laughs> all over the place, but yeah. So, um, Eden, I went to school at Eden, international school. Um, it was the best school ever. I'm sure people <laughs> who went there know that, who went to Eden, yeah. Um, he, he, made it, he made it 
such a good experience for me because I, I didn't want to go there because people are telling me, oh, it's in the village or in Barawa. But I'm like, I want to go. Mommy was like, you can go and see how it is. So I go there, I love it. I find people there who are, I think the, one of the, some of the best people I've met in my life so far. I had a really good ex like, vision of him, like how he would come and, and you know, interact with people and the teachers and he transformed so many people's lives and I got to see that at a young age and experience him in like a different kind of setting because I, I don't really, I, I didn't experience him in, in like his career side. So I don't really, yeah, but at least that, at least I have that with him and you know, that special relationship at Eden. I remember um, when I went to school, when I went to uni in Malaysia, I think I was the first to leave and go so far away and it was so hard for him. He would call me all the time. I would have like maybe one and a half week break and he would always want me to come home. Like the, the flight was like two days, a whole two days of coming. And then I would be here like for five days and go back, but he's like, I miss you so much. I can't, you know, whenever you can come home, just come. Yeah, so that was really special and you can see how I was his baby. <laughs> yeah, so, um, Daddy, I want to talk about his relationship with our mom. They had such a, like a good friendship and every morning, like at 6 a.m., before he woke up to sing and all that, we would hear them, like in our house in, in Tinder and in Imbuya, we are, our, our bedrooms are really close, are really close to each other. So we'd always hear them like mumbling and like laughing and what, we're like, okay, these guys are awake. So, you know, <laughs> let's wake up. Then he would wake up and start singing and I really loved the, the hymns that we've been singing because those are, those are the songs he, he, was, he would sing every single morning. Every single morning, I can hear his, I can hear his voice in my head. I, I was hearing his voice while we were singing. And that was so special. That's so special. Yeah, yeah so I, I, Tracy, Tracy talked about um, when, when mommy was sick. Did you talk about When mommy was sick, um, Pops really did everything, everything in his power at that time to make sure she was good, to make sure she could, she could have the best treatment, the best, I don't know, whatever it took, the emotional support, the everything, would wake up early, go to, uh, that was like almost at the end of her life, would go to IHK and he would not sleep. I don't think Pop slept for like a whole year because he would come, he would come home, he would come to the hospital and then go to Mbara because that was the time Eden was, you know, being set up. Yeah. So he would come to Mbara and then he would come to Kampala and then he would go back and then he would, like, he would do, he, he, want, he did everything that he could have done for her. And uh, when she passed, I was really, really worried about him because I, I was in Essex, it was like, at the beginning of my Essex, yeah. So uh, I was with him when I was in vac vacation, but Sam and Tracy were already at uni. So it was like very lonely and we stayed in the same house where she was and you know, he kept all her stuff. And sometimes I would just find him like in the couch, just seated there like looking so depressed and broken and everything and I was so worried about him. Because I was like, now what do I do? So I would start calling people. Oh, can you please call Pops and like take him out or take him to the beach or something like that? Then like someone would call him and I'd be in the corridor waiting to like hear what he says. So someone would call him and be like, oh, can we go for tea? And he's like, no, no, no. And I was really worried about him. That sometime we went to, we, we, he was feeling so sick. 
and I was just home with him. So he's like, Rose, let's go to, let's call an ambulance. Me, I'm, I'm sick. So when the guys came, they were like, eh, but you're walking. What? He's like, please, I don't, don't talk to me. Let's go. So we get there and the doctor is like, you know what? Nothing is, nothing is physically wrong with you. You're, you're, you're dealing with something really emotional. And it was because he was so lonely and depressed and like, we are all living. But God did something for him and brought anti-charity into his life. <laughs> he, gave, he gave him a second chance at love and not just love. True love, deep love, genuine love, the love that he deserved from anti-charity. And uh, anti-charity, thank you so much for loving Pops, for loving him. He loved you so, 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 so much. He's sweetie, he's sweetheart, he's sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, and um, that God gave him more children, more babies, Lucy. Gave him Lucy. Lucy had like, eh, perhaps the biggest portion of Pops's heart. <laughs> he, he loved Lucy. Like, um, if you were in Pops's bad books, and let's say you just put Lucy as your profile picture, that's automatic <laughs> back to good, good books. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, but all of us did have a special place in his heart, and we knew it, we knew where we, where, you know? He confided in some others, that's what he always used to say, that people say, but it was the truth. <laughs> he confided in summer, um, he trusted summer. Summer was like, you know, everything to do with anything, summer was, it was summer. Then Tracy, favorite <laughs> his favorite Tracy and then for me it was baby Rose yeah so anti charity I have a special 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 place in my heart because of that and one thing about Lucy actually I'll just say this story Lucy has these phases of like pets <laughs> like she she, would, she wants like a puppy this time then she's like nah I'm tired of that then she wants like kittens and what and then pups he was so loving that anything she would say he's like you know what Lucy wants a puppy can we go get a puppy get a puppy okay now Lucy doesn't want the puppy okay take it back you know like <laughs> and then now she now she wanted kittens so now he got her kittens and <laughs> Sometimes she likes them, sometimes she doesn't. But anyway, Lucy's kittens, Brittany and... <laughs> yeah, Brittany got lost, but she used to. <laughs> yeah, anyway. I guess I'm taking too long. Um, yeah. Uh, the cats used to come and sleep with pups in here on, on, the, on the couch and we always used to be like, but what's going on here? But those are Lucy's cats so they can do whatever they want. <laughs> anyway, so um, another person I really want to talk about is mommy, mommy number nine, Auntie Maria, as you know her as mommy. Yeah, mommy and pups were so close. They were so close that like let's say something was happening at home and we didn't know how to like talk to him or like get through to him we're like let's call the big guns <laughs> big guns is mommy when she would come you know like okay at least she's here so she'll sort it she'll sort it with him and what because you know perhaps he, he was the center of our whole us as the kakurus perhaps was the center of our whole lives like everything about our lives was it was him he was really our superman our superman our i mean if you watch the avengers he would be leading those guys yeah he was like our superman he knew everything about everything like i feel like i'm worried about myself like can i make decisions without his input but i know that he will be guiding me be guiding all of us 
as he always has. I can I, I, I just pray that God continues to to keep um, his voice in our heads and yeah, it's just unbelievable. But I'm so grateful that we got to to be with him at his most fragile time. At his most fragile time. We had never ever ever seen him even just weak or you know. Yeah, but we got to be there for him. He called us his army and that that means everything. That means everything to know that he knew that we were there for him no matter what, no matter what. Yeah. And last thing is um, I was always so scared that if Pops left like before, I, I didn't have, I feel like if now if Pops leaves us, I feel like I have nothing to live for, so what's the whole point? But I, what God did for me is he, he gave me a really, really loving husband and two beautiful children, like something that I can live for now that he is gone. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. Daddy, I'll miss you. I love you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, girls. Um, dear mourners, please bear with us. This is their time. Um, we are left with very few speeches, and uh, I request, I'll humbly request, uh, the next speakers to be brief with their remarks. Uh, but just a few condolence messages that have also been flowing in quickly. Uh, one from um, the Denton Law Firm, Chuck, Chuck Gaba, and Otatina Advocates with a contribution of four million shillings towards the uh, very expenses. And the next one was Birunji, Barata and Associates with also a contribution of one million shillings towards the burial expenses. And also one from All Saints Cathedral, we really appreciate it, uh, with a contribution of one million shillings towards funeral expenses. Uh, without further ado, could I request the other children of Uncle Kakuru, uh, who are, happen to be his nephews and nieces, Dennis, Joseph, Laura, Rachel, please make your way up here and please um, be cautious of time. Thank you. His Grace, um, clergy, uh, provost, uh, thank you very much, by the way, yesterday for coming. Uh, we're honored, especially the choir. Um, usually the choirs are, they are unsung heroes, but uh, I thought we should uh, recognize the choir yesterday. Uh, they did a tremendous job. Uh, you know, those hymns that uh, they were singing has really uh, soothed our hearts. So, Provost and your team, thank you. Uh, the Judiciary, um, uh, the Chief Justice, the Deputy Chief Justice, uh, the Principal Judge, uh, and all these very high-ranking people here, uh, the Minister, uh, Honorable Tafiri, uh, all protocols observed in the interest of time. Um, I had wanted my the ladies being the gentleman I am my, so for my sisters to speak, but uh, I'll just quickly summarize. Uh, really, uh, we are truly devastated. Uh, we are trying to put on a brave face, but uh, inside, really, we are completely questioning uh, how can this happen? Uh, why should this happen? Uh, but as St. Paul tells us, uh, even when we mourn, you know, we mourn with hope. Uh, but we also uh, know that uh, Uncle Kakuru uh, really has gone in a better place. And he also told us, uh, uh, he, 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 I don't know if this was, you know, because, you know, he could tell that maybe the end was near, but he already said that, he, he, and I, I can testify this because he told it to me with his own mouth, that there is the afterlife. So 
these bodies of ours, you know, that's not the whole story. The, you know, he, he said it that uh, we will go to a better place. This is just a body. My soul, you know, will, will, will be somewhere and life will continue. So that, that transition for him was, was real. Uh, so that sort of comforts us, but uh, we, we, uh, we cannot imagine a life without him. Uh, how will this happen? But uh, this has happened and we'll have to soldier on. So, um, so a lot has been said about Uncle Kakuru. Uh, it is true that uh, he was a truly uh, exceptional individual um, with a very, very sharp mind. For me, that is probably my... And when I say I, me and my siblings, he's really sharp mind. Uh, me, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in history and philosophy, as I said last night. And uh, in his truest element, you know, he was always telling stories. So uh, history, philosophy, the Egyptian pyramids, uh, of course, politics, war, um, you know. So, and he's been telling us all these stories as, as we grow up. Um, and he, he, he was a teacher, you know, a fountain of, of knowledge for us. Uh, and so I, I will miss that because you, you rarely find people who are that so gifted. You know, in science, he will engage you. You will not even think he's a, he's a lawyer. Uh, it comes to medicine, he will engage. Uh, in politics, very strong. So he was a truly all-rounder, and it was always a privilege to be in, in, in his presence. Uh, so I just want to summarize uh, Anko Kakuru. Uh, he had many attributes, but three main attributes that would like to uh, uh, remember him for. Uh, three, in the interest of time. First is that he was a family man. Um, uh, above all, and to his most core, family was the most important thing. Uh, and I think he grew up also in a very strong uh, Christian family. Uh, you, you, we all know his background. He had a very, and he was, you know, one of the last. So he grew up with, when his father was already old, and his father loved him and taught him, you know. When you're the firstborn, you usually don't get these attributes, but the lastborns are the ones who are usually cared for by the father, they are spoiled. So he, he had that from his, from his parents. And you could tell that he always had a cherished uh, childhood. Um, so for him, family was so important. Um, and uh, I stand here with my siblings to say that we are beneficiaries of that love he had for uh, his, his family. Um, as you know, um, he He's a, a father to us, that's all we know. Um, my, Tracy, Rose, uh, Lucy, Samantha um, are just as my sisters. I do not, you know, uh, differentiate. It's not there because I didn't experience it. Uh, so if you ask me, I have, you know, four, five, six sisters uh, because that's how we grew up. So uh, we want to stand here and salute him for loving us and for loving our mother uh, extremely, his sister, uh, as Rose and uh, Summer and Tracy have said, and Aunt Charity, they were very close, uh, very close. And actually, uh, uh, Mommy, I know you, you, I don't want to say this, but I know you'll miss him because, you know, he was, they were friends and they took non-stop over little tri trivial things but always talking you know they were so close so we thank Kakuru for that um, for, 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 for giving us space for accommodating us and, and, uh, and ensuring um, uh, we also I'd also like to say that he was very caring to his siblings um, his brothers sisters and their children uh, I guess you'll hear from that. Uh, so, for Uncle Kuru, for that, uh, we salute you uh, and, and, and we thank you for, for always being uh, very caring, uh, as Rose said, very playful. I mean, when we were growing up, uh, he would come, you know, wrapped up in a towel, uh, scaring us as little kids, uh, calling him uh, Echijam Kuku, uh, if, if those who remember. 
Uh, the next thing I want to remember Nkakuru is for is that he was a, a brilliant lawyer. Um, his grasp of the law uh, was unprecedented. Uh, this is evident in the quality of his judgments. Uh, or is very rich, detailed, and well thought out. And on this note, we would like to, uh, Chief Justice, thank you very much for you and your team for honoring him with the session yesterday. Uh, it was, it was, he was a humble man probably, but I, I, the, first of all, I, he was a very detailed person. He likes procedure, process, and the way that this function was carried out yesterday, I mean, truly reflected the values that he believes in. Um, so that function that you did for him yesterday, very well organized, on time, everyone was articulate, uh, very smart, uh, the principal judge uh, and your team, is, you know, you spoke very well. Uh, I'd like to, to thank you for honoring him. And, it, and it, all of you spoke from your hearts. Uh, it wasn't just a show. Uh, I think this was deep. And uh, as a family, we, 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 we thank you for that. Um, so just to go back to his uh, brilliant lawyer, uh, we, I, I, I'm always reading his judgments. Uh, I, 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 I don't, uh, I'm not a lawyer, uh, I'm a banker, uh, but we happened to be on a group. Uh, I went to Budo, and uh, there are some very good minds there who are already saying, but you, I actually didn't know, but people would say, your uncle has written out a very brilliant uh, judgment. Because for me, you know, I always took these things for granted that he was brilliant. But now that, you know, some of my colleagues were making it more, making me more uh, cautious about it, I, I've started reading his, 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 uh, his judgments. Uh, first of all, they were all very long, you know. Uh, so that shows that he, he, he was very thorough and deliberate in, in what he did. Um, he had no place for mediocrity. He was interested in detail. And I think these are good things that the young lawyers can look up to. Uh, what is the quality of your judgment? Uh, what are you passing on? What are you communicating? And it, not even lawyers, any other profession, or even in our personal disciplines, how, how do we do our work? Uh, do we do it well? Do we pay attention to detail? His English, his grammar, you know, all these things were, were, were very important. Uh, his razor sharp mind. Um, so, uh, we, 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 we uh, would really like to salute his brilliance uh, as, a, as a legal officer. Um, but lastly, uh, we, we, in the interest of time, I'd like to, oh, just before I go that, uh, we were also told that when he was a young lawyer, and I think I should say this for um, his kids to know, that when he was a young lawyer, uh, he was already so eloquent and charismatic that even the judges at that time you know were always impressed uh, by the way he you know he he he, he articulated his uh, his his positions um, and should you have the unfortunate uh, uh, <laughs> of being on the opposite you know he he'd always crush uh, the the opposition uh, very 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 uh, decisively uh, just as to sum up his legal mind uh, but lastly for us is that um, he wa Uncle Kakuru was a believer. Uh, uh, and we're here to testify that he believed in God, as I've said. Uh, despite his sickness, his faith in God uh, was unshaken. That I can testify. Uh, uh, even in his last days, we had the opportunity to spend the last personally one week. I had seen him before in January in Nairobi. Uh, but he, he always was, you know, uh, you know, giving glory to God, you know, not shaken or questioning God. Uh, I found that profound because sometimes people give up or start questioning God. Uh, Uncle Kakuru did not do that. Uh, but even before that, uh, he was not only a religious man, but he practiced his faith. Uh, People only come to church on Sundays and that's it. But him, he was a practicing Christian. And I think uh, the grace should take note of this. Uh, he cared for people whom he didn't know. He built a school. He built a church. 
uh, where uh, Rose went. He built a church in memory of his father, but also as a testimony for God. You know, uh, that school he built, actually some people had advised him before to build a mall, to use the money and build a mall. But he said, uh, okay, you build a mall, you make some money, that's okay, but I think my life will be more impactful to society if I build a school. You see, so you could see the attributes he had. Uh, a mall versus a school. Uh, oh, we, we, it's not bad to build a mall, but I think we need more schools than malls. Uh, so, um, he was a believer. He practiced what he believed, uh, looked after orphans. Ourselves are beneficiaries of that faith. Many other people, as I said yesterday, I know uh, one or two people in South Sudan that he gave scholarships. I know of a, 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 some people in, in, uh, in Soroti, one of the boys in Soroti he looked after who has now, uh, you know, uh, graduated to be a lawyer. And these are people he didn't know, but he helped. That is the true religion, you know, of helping your neighbor. Um, lastly, uh, we'd like to thank uh, Aunt Charity um, for loving pups. Uh, as, as, as has been said, when Antwini passed, uh, we were all concerned about you know, how he was going to cope. Uh, but in came charity and you know, turned his life around. Uh, I am married and I'd always young Kakuru and say, ah, but this man is you know, more romantic than myself. Uh, and I'm suppo supposed to be the other way around. Uh, you know, so... Uh, but I can also happy to report that, you know, I copied from him and uh, I, I think the report card is not bad. But he was very, uh, very loving uh, charity. I think you know Uncle Kakuru loved you uh, unreservedly. Uh, we thank you for loving him. Um, uh, as a family, really, we really thank you and charity. We know sometimes some of us have very few words. We probably don't speak. Uh, but please, uh, uh, thank you for loving Uncle Kakuru to the end. I'd also like to thank Auntie Charity for being with him to the end uh, and without any pretense. Uh, I was there and I could see. It is true, should, I, I, I can say that in the last two months, maybe you've slept for not more than one day. And I don't know how you've been doing it, but you did it. Always by his side. Uh, and I know he died knowing that you love him and, 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 and full, full of love and, and comfort. Um, we thank Samantha, uh, Tracy, uh, Rose, uh, Lucy, uh, Eriakim and Amara for really giving the reason, perhaps the reason to fight on because we knew, you know, part of the of this fight was also in the mind. Um, so we, we thank you girls um, and, and the twins. Um, we also thank God for blessing uh, his daughters, Tracy and Rose, with grandchildren. Um, it's unfortunate that he's not seen these grandchildren, uh, the last two, but they are there. They are there. And uh, girls, I know this is hard, but those kids you've given birth to he lives in them, okay? So for me, that's my comfort to you. He is very much alive in those children. Um, I'd like to also thank Sama, Samantha, who spent uh, a considerable time because the other two were pregnant, uh, left her young family to go and support uh, and charity in Nairobi. Uh, for almost two months, uh, and when I came to Nairobi myself, I really experienced what you guys were going through. I mean, uh, it, it was tough, uh, but thank you, Sama. Uh, would like to thank your husband, um, uh, uh, Ota, um, Peter, and Yasin, uh, for supporting you to be able to support. Uh, lastly, I'd like to thank our mother, uh, also who you know has loved him, has been there with him uh, ever since he came, became sick, you know, her life stopped uh, and, and has really uh, been with him uh, uh, till the end. Uh, so on behalf of his siblings and the greater family, 
uh, we are forever indebted uh, to Uncle Kakuru. Uh, and by the way, let me also say that there are other families from Barara that Uncle Kakuru was very in instrumental. Uh, the Ndahendechre family, uh, George here, um, the Njendo family, the Nkore family, uh, the Njendo family, the Mpora family, uh, so many, all these people who uh, were affected by the brutality uh, when Amin came and, you know, uh, the, during the Amin's regime where people uh, lost their husbands and there were so many widows and so many orphans. Uh, all of us have great stories uh, to tell to what Uncle Kakuru did for these families. Um, so, uh, till we meet again, uh, Uncle KK, uh, rest in peace. Uh, rest in peace, Pops. Rest in peace, Uncle Kakuru. May God receive you in glory. Thank you very, thank you very much, Joseph, Laura, and Rachel. Interesting enough, um, the school that um, Joseph talked about, that Uncle Kakuru started, has been turned into a law development center in Barara. This is more like giving back to his legal fraternity. Uh, we thank you. Um, let me quickly invite, because we're running out of time, let me quickly invite Auntie Mary, please, to give her remarks. My name is uh, Mary Maria Variam Shura, and I am Kenneth Kakuru's sister. Your Grace, the Provost Church. I know because of time, I won't, I won't say much, but I just want to summarize. I thank God, first of all, for the gift of life, the gift of family, and the blessing of having Kakuru in our lives. I want to thank church because for us, our family, those who know us, church is who we are. Church is what we know. Church is what our parents were and taught us and this has been our foundation so your grace when the time came because kakuru knew he called he called me and he said okay he i knew whom to call to even to inform even before he, he, when he was still communicating. So, when the time came, when he, he, he was still, he said, okay, now you know, you inform, call Bishop. Tell Bishop Sheridan. So it was like, tell church. His life was all about accountability, like they said. So the first thing I did, I called, it was around 10. He was still alive, by the way, he was not dead. But he wanted me, he had like, he had everything planned of what would, would happen. So I called Bishop Sheridan and I told him, and I said, it's private, it has a, he's still alive, but he, he wants you to know, and he has asked me to let you know that it's not going to be long. It was like he was giving accountability that the church, the bishop, was not going to hear that over what. Mm -mm. Because even when it started, you know, going through social media and everything, those who mattered, they knew. And he formed church. So he was very clear with his God. I could have said more and more and more, but you know, my children always say, okay, did mommy make a speech? Yes, mommy made a speech. 
I always I speak. But so I always make notes, notes if I have a presentation. I, I sleep around 3 a.m. I've written everything. But when I come to speak, I don't even look at it. So I'm not going to look at it. Don't worry. I'm not looking at it. I'm just going to say, as I always do, what is in my mind, in my heart. We wanted, myself personally and, and Kenneth all the time, we wanted that if the end comes, a certain priest or clergy does not just stand there and talk about him or, or me or, or, or our parents without even knowing who is in the coffin. No. We wanted somebody who would know him. And your grace, thank you very much. <laughs> Provost, you have, he has been your parishioner. Even when you came here, this is our church. Our church. My sisters of Christian Women Fellowship, I'm the founder chairperson of All Saints Cathedral Christian Women Fellowship. <laughs> I know God. God has walked with me. God has walked with us. So, I told the prophet yesterday and I said, people who don't know God, what do they do when that time comes? Because there's a time in life where it doesn't matter how much money you have on your account, what the titles you have, how many cows or houses or, or children, it's, it's just, it's nothing. Kakuru's journey has showed me that the most important thing is to have your mind very clear where you are going, you are not panicking, you are not desperate, and then to have your family by your side. That's my takeaway. So, we know God, he knew God, our parents knew, knew God. Yesterday my sister, Mrs. Mpewe, testified about God. Those who know us, they know that we know God. So, if you're going to be able, I just want to, I'm not going to repeat, but let me thank the people who loved and appreciated Kenneth. We call him Kakuru because that's how we call him.
you are a P. Yeah, he would say, you guys, you mean all along you knew that it was important to, to, to turn up with me in time, and you always, you always stress me, in me telling you, keep time, don't be late. Anyway, you have done well. He was never good. Like, he would not give you all, most, all, all, all the, you know, encouragement and whatever. Baba Nyakore was around, which I find very... But, he, we, we knew what to do. And the session, it was a sum. It was a testament of who he was. That's why I can tell you, and it was beautiful. And as, as for us family, that was it. That was a life well lived. That people were not forced. People talked about him as he was. The Chief Justice and, Chief Justice and, the, and the principal, and everyone, everyone said, said at 10 o'clock, you could be having fireworks. fireworks. But at, at one, one, you'll have you lunch have together. together. I want I to want tell to everyone here, here dear Mona, who was, was never a malicious, malicious person. person. He was never. There was, there no, was no drop of malice in him. But that's who he was. What he believed is what he said. And what he said is what he believed. You know, people, you either liked Kakuru or you didn't like him. And when you liked him, you liked him. Completely, there's nothing anyone can tell you. You like Kakuru, I like Kakuru. I don't like Kakuru. I don't like him. There was never any between. No gray area, or he'll put his, his foot here, or another one there, or he'll come and, 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 list, and talk to you here. No. His word was his word. His frown, everyone of us knows it. Perhaps will give it to you. But he was an honest person. Such, such people like him, you knew where you were with him. There are no surprises. When he became a judge, I'm going round and round because I'm, a, 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 but I'm just getting. When he became a family, we made a dinner for him at the Sheraton to celebrate him. I remember he stood up and he said, Family, I have become a judge. Please let me do my job. Never, ever come in the way of my work. Let me do my, my job. There are incidences. People knew how close I was. Where people came to give me a bribe to take to him. They came. But I looked at them and I said, if I take this bribe, if I even open my mouth about it, first person to be arrested and I'm believing it I stand here on behalf of our family on behalf of my father's family on behalf of Banyankore of integrity to thank the, the Kakuru that he, he did not let you down he did not let you down Stand here as a family man, Kakuru did not let his family down. Yes. He did not let Winnie down. He has not let the charity down. I can testify to that. <clears throat> what the girls have said, you've heard. My siblings, they know very well that he did not let our parents down. Yes. He did not. 
Kakuru did everything, ticked all the boxes, even when from his youngest days. He was such a, a tough thing to, fall, to, to have him as a sibling because he did all the right things and it could be a challenge to, other, to, to us because Kakuru always did everything. He listened, he worked hard, he excelled at school. He, he did everything. He stayed home, Kakuru would, like Charlie was saying, Kakuru could wash cups, Kakuru could cook, Kakuru could do everything. So, as a sibling, he could be annoying at times. You know how annoying siblings can be. But he excelled in everything he did. And as us, his siblings, we know that he kept our parents' legacy intact. Intact. And at a great cost. Because leadership costs. Leadership in any area costs. If you stand up for leadership, it will cost you. Because people will not want to know to, 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 they will not want to know to what you are do, what you are doing. But when you decide to do it, and that's what Kakuru's life has been about. Even at family level, at workplace, in church, his grace was testifying. Even at, at the fall of church, that was him. That was him. So, leadership costs, but he, he made a, a point that he would walk that. Even with our parents, he, for him, he would, he would, he would, he would tell my, our mother, he said, no. He would not do, 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 do that. He would do the right thing. He always did the right thing. And it cost him. But he did the right thing. My sister, Hilda, you know, our mother lived to 100 and, almost 104. So by that time, he would, he, he would live in our homes, even before that. But Kakuru would never come in a room and greet our mother standing. He would kneel. Even when he was a judge of the Court of Appeal of Uganda. He would kneel and greet my mother. And my mother would touch his head. So one time my sister Hilda said, wait a minute. You know Kakuru, every time he greets grandma, he is, he is kneeling. And grandma touches his head and blesses. No wonder he's so blessed. <laughs> Kakuru Akabomana Murunji, as a child, he did everything and he got the blessing. Kakuru was the last born in our family. We are a family of 12 children. Kakuru was the last, but he got the blessing. But the blessing cost him. But he did everything. Kakuru loved us. Kakuru loved our children. He loved his siblings' children. They know it, they, his nephews and his nieces. He always showed up for them yes. at any occasion where they needed. He, will, he would be there. And Kakuru would make you proud. Do you not have a relative who makes you proud? Do you not have a relative who makes you feel bad and you are like, eh, he's, he's my relative, yeah, I know he's here, he is. No, to feel proud, to stand and say, he's my uncle. Like the girl said, he was our pups. Like my nieces, they say, he was our uncle Kakuru. That, 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 that was who he was. But it did not come without costs. Because Kakura Kai uh, uh, those who know, Kakura was like a, 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 a difficult. He, 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 because he wanted so much our perfection. Because I would tell him, you, people, you need to measure them. Okay, oh, the Archbishop is leaving. But as I end, I just say, I am very, very happy to be 
Kakuru's sibling. I'm happy to be Kakuru's sister. I'm very happy to be identified as his friend. If God had asked me, Mary, Maria, what sort of brother would you like? Tell me and I'll give you. I would never, ever have come to near to what Kakuru was to me. That's all I can say. I thank him for loving me, for holding my hand. When my husband was murdered, he was, I think, like 14. I was coming to, I was, I was not even 21, but we've worked together. I've been a widow for 46 years. Kakuru has been by my side. I wish every girl could have a sister like him, and I wish every boy could, have, could, could treat their sisters like this. These days, parents go, and brothers, they send away their sisters. They say, you belong where you married. They don't inherit anything. They don't give them anything. They become destitute. Brothers. Brothers. I want to appeal men here. Treat your children equally. Our father, my sister is a witness and our family is a witness. He had land, freehold land and lease land. But in his will, his will was very clear. He left my sisters and I his freehold land. And the two of my brothers, Kakuru and Enoch. But this, us, he, he left us his freehold land. That's why, who he was. And we are able to come and build homes there. We built homes, my sister, myself, and then also Kenneth built a school and a church. But he, that he told my mother, our home is like on a hill, he said, he said when the boys one time when they will build you know tired homes around there it will be good but it was my sister who first built one and I built another one the land he left us we, 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 we built homes tired homes beautiful homes and our brother Kakuru with us all the time he built a school and the church. And when you come to Mbarara City now, the only area you will see which is planned, which is well set up, it is our home. And that is Kapu. That is us. So people don't say the girls bring to their brothers. Gift your, your girls. Put them in your wheels. Leave them land. Leave them homes. Kapu made his will was very clear. Kakuru's will was very clear because he, we, I know about it. After that, he told me, Have I, haven't I been fair? I said, you are very fair. Whether you have girls or boys, you have seen these girls. Are they not, are they not equal, even more equal than boys? Are they not? Because even a girl can keep their father's name. I have kept my father's legacy myself. My father loved church. I've st I stayed in church. I did the right things. Even now I'm the chairperson of East African Revival Museum of Ankole Diocese. I am in church. My children are here. So what I'm trying to say is that yeah, okay, time and time, but I thought this was important at this point to say it even when the Chief Justice is here and everyone. Leave your, put your girls in your wheels and wheel them property. Because then their husbands, when you have your property, even your husband does not just treat you like that. You, you, because you also have a choice. You have a choice. You have a choice. I have my husband's property and I also have my father's property 
I have willed my children property and give, and give people property when they are still alive. Kakuru gave my children property last Christmas. He called us and gave freehold property to my four children. I thank him. So as I end, this is what it is. This is Kakuru's life, a life well lived, a life well celebrated, a life worth it. living, friends, Don, everyone here, everyone knows Kakuru, Sir Rich, thank you so much. Afando Tafire, you, people may, may see you here that you have come as a Minister of Internal Affairs. Afando Tafire is my brother-in-law. When he came from the bush, he came and held our hands. He held our hands, my children. And then Afando Tafire, he has never made me feel as if kunyeganya. If I call his phone and he doesn't pick, I know he's busy, but he will call me again. He has never, when he raised me with these children, made me feel as if he's tired of me. I find I thank you. People should be like that. So, thank you so much, friends. I see you all. You have turned up. You have come. This is what Kenneth would have loved. And as a family, it is well with my soul. My sisters, it is well with my soul. When people say, what, will Mary, what is going to happen to Mary? I'm, I'm good. Because it was well. Thank you so much. Thank you very thank, much. Thank you, ma'am. I just also wanted to uh, recognize uh, when Uncle Kakuru passed in Nairobi, uh, all of, most of us were with him. Uh, but uh, Dennis uh, was here, Dennis, uh, our brother, uh, was here, you know, uh, almost alone. Uh, so we would like to thank him. Uh, he's now in Imbarara uh, organizing, but I thought I should uh, uh, mention that and, and thank Dennis uh, for, you know, holding forth when everyone else uh, was in Nairobi. So uh, dear Dennis, uh, Nina, uh, uh, and King, uh, I don't know if King is here, uh, we should really also thank King. Uh, King is Uncle Kakuru's uh, nephew who has been living with him. And King has been really, because uh, everyone was out of the house, so this young boy has really been holding the house. So King, uh, King, wherever you are, if you can stand up and be recognized, but we'd really like to, to thank you for, 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 for holding forth. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Auntie Maria. Indeed, Uncle Kokuru was a meticulous, principled, brilliant, and most of all, a brave man. We apologize for going over our time, but uh, let's um, conclude with two final uh, remarks from the Lordship, the CJ, Chief Justice. members of the clergy, the bereaved family of Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru, my Lord the Deputy Chief Justice, my Lord the Principal Judge, Right Honorable Prime Minister Mam Babazi, Honorable Kahinda Tafiri, Minister of Internal Affairs, my Lord Chair, Judicial Service Commission, Judicial Officers in your various capacities. I will use three minutes to make my statement because we spoke at great length yesterday and we'll be repeating what we've said already. Everything that people have said about Kenneth Kakuru is absolutely true. No caring favor. Just look at the booklet, the prayer booklet, the requirement must. Just, just pick your booklet, look at the front page. What I was saying yesterday, that is Kenneth Kakuru with a very serious countenance when he's doing official work. 
Then what I said yesterday, it would flip like turning the coin. Look at the back. That is the Kenneth I knew. Assertive. He made his point in a strong way. Some of us, we, we speak without being assertive, but for him, he made his point in a very, in a very strong way. I didn't know anybody could intimidate Kenneth until one of the papers, I don't remember which paper, Maria knows what I'm speaking about, came out with some story about he and I having uh, disagreed or there was some altercation, which was not true. So Kenneth came literally bursting into my office. My Lord, this is a help me. Now, this is a person known, known to be very strong-willed, pleading that I should help him. I said, what, what's the matter? He said, help me with my sister. My sister is cold, she's rebuking me. She said, how can you do this to your boss who is your friend? Say, said, please, you know it is not true. Call her and speak to her. So I spoke to Maria and said, this is not true. And that saved him. So, so even the strongest personality has someone who intimidates him or her. And I think, I think Maria was. The other thing I want to say about Kenneth, which I, I think the family said it, but not clearly. He was a very loyal friend. Not many people are loyal friends. Kenneth lost a friend, I think boyhood friend, they went to school together in some foreign country under circumstances which I don't want to mention here. He sought permission to go, he went. The fellow was dead and uh, I think had been buried or something like that, but he went to try to find out what had really happened. Only a loyal friend can remain your friend even when you are dead. In many friendships, death do us part. I had no problem with Kenneth. As a matter of fact, I appointed him in charge of organizing the registry, cause listing. You know, some lawyers come to, to registries and they seek to shop judges who should be on panel. So said, Kenneth, sit on this and send me your draft. I don't think a single lawyer could go to Kenneth to say, please, I don't want uh, Justice Butera, uh, I want Justice Cavito. You, I mean, the, it was unthinkable that anybody could go to him. And he did his work well. And he churned out decisions. So I said yesterday that the judiciary spent over 800 million. I saw some paper writing billion. 800 million shillings to save his life. That was his entitlement as a serving judicial officer. And, and I said yesterday that if I had accepted him, to retire the way he had uh, sought to do. This function we would have held it last year or earlier even. Because there is no way he would have raised 800 million shillings. He would have sold everything, those freeholds my sister is talking about, the leaseholds, the school. He would have sold all of them. So we are according, which is his entitlement, we are according him official burial, official funeral. Right from getting his body from Nairobi to taking it to Mbarara and interring him is the responsibility of the judiciary and we are ready for it. 
we shall do that <laughs> to honor our colleague. Mama, we are with you. Maria, we are with you. Whatever we can, we will do. It can be advisory, it can be material, we will do. I thank every one of you who turned up here to honor someone who in a way was an enigma. Like Maria said, if you understood him, you love him forever, through, through and through. If you did not understand him, I don't know about hating, you'd keep away from him. <clears throat> I can only beseech the Lord God to take the soul of Honorable Justice Kenneth Kakuru into his presence for eternity. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chief Justice. Thank you so much for your patience. I would be amiss if I didn't invite the government representative who will give his final, the final remarks. Honorable Kaindo Tafide. Thank you, my Lord, the Chief Justice, my Lord, the Deputy Chief Justice, Right Honorable Prime Minister Mbawas and your wife, my Lord, the Principal Judge, judges of the clergy, judges of the Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, and High Court, and all of you, ladies and gentlemen, mourners. I'm not standing here as a representative of government, although I'm more part of government, the late Justice Kakuru, like you've heard from Maria, is my brother-in-law. And uh, I had a opportunity to grow up with him and to be grateful to him for supporting our children, our orphan ch children, when I was, his, their father died and I was away. And uh, I'm eternally grateful to him. Somebody made a remark about uh, retirement. Retirement is relative. Because what I, you call retirement, I call accomplishment. Jesus served for only three years and retired. He had accomplished his mission. There are people who go through life and exit without accomplishing anything. So, retirement is relative. For us, for some people are appointed to office, for us we appointed ourselves to the service of mankind. So we shall retire when we stop serving mankind. <laughs> I don't want to be mistaken, but my calling is service to the people. I went to the bush not aware that I would retire. I could have retired there. I am here. My biological past, when my biological past catches up with me and I go from active service, I'll go into volunteer reserve and stay at the service of mankind. I'll retire last post. Last post means when I follow Kapuru. So retirement is relative. You can retire from active service, but you go into reserve and volunteer reserve and eternal reserve. So we shall retire. About Justice Kapuru, he was unique. Like the, my Lord, the Chief Justice said, he served as a judge without fear, favor, or ill will. They didn't matter to him who you were, where you came from. I'm sure if there was anybody spiritual who came to him, he would tell him exactly what he told everybody. And there are very few of those judges on our benches who are remaining. <laughs> who 
when he was appointed justice of the court of appeal ironically he'd done very well in the interviews and i was minister of justice but when the papers for recommendation to the president came his name was missing i remember i called the then chairman judicial service commission to say where is kenneth kakuru's papers the late the, sorry justice ogora told me he said Kakuru was our best candidate. How can his papers be missing? So, I refuse. I refused to send the papers to the president for assent until Kakuru's name was. <laughs> that notwithstanding, he didn't give me any favors. <laughs> Nor did he give favors to government, as you know. He was faithful and just to his job from day one to today. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, let's learn our lessons from the late Kakuru. Let's learn that there is enough space for all of us to play our role while we are still on earth. Because to die is not to live in the minds of those we leave behind. You are remembered for the good things you've done, not the ill will you've done to other people. Ensure people speak about the good things you did when you are passing. I hope my book will be, my name will be in the book of those who did good things when they were still on earth. <laughs> Maria, I'm very grateful. Somebody has read my epitaph when I'm still alive. Thank you for saying good things about me when I, <laughs> when I can hear them. You know, it's interesting, these fellows in the papers, you know, I'm one of the people who have read their epitaph. I read it on television. Somebody had said I had done, died in an accident and that day I was going to South Africa. Then they were writing about me on television. Then I laughed. I said, look at these crooks. They were saying all the wrong things about me. Now that I'm dead, they are praying. <laughs> Please, say the good things about me when I'm still alive and tell me where I'm going wrong. <clears throat> tell me where I'm going wrong and if I don't reform, then ask me to retire. I thank you. Give him a round of applause for his excellent speech and everyone's great speeches. Thank you very much. Um, just to conclude really quickly, um, to summarize it all, I think what everyone was able to speak on from whether it was the judges or from the church, um, family, big things which we can all take away from this is who my Uncle Kakuru was to everyone. My godfather, my Uncle KK. And I remember when, I'm sure the girls remember, way back when when I came to visit 23 years ago and I was you know what Uncle Kuhuru taught me in that little bit of time about how to behave how to be as Auntie Maria said to be a better brother to your sisters because you know Sam was my sister and I was obviously being annoying to her the whole entire time um, and even Uncle Kuhuru telling me about how it's important about the way you carry yourself and the little conversations we would have during our car rides for me, I think it's very important that we're able to speak all these great things about him. And I think if we could all just, before this all concludes, give him one big more round of applause for the great man that he is. And we will wrap thank up. And before you. we finish, Dennis is going to also let thank us know about Thank you Ontario. so much. Uh, thank you so much, MCs. Thank you so much for all the speeches. I'm just going to do one little thing, and I'm doing this for the sake of Justice Kakuru. Um, we normally don't have services exceeding three hours, but for the sake of the children, I'm going to allow them to play their short video. And as they plan that video to come on, I just want to request us to stand as we sing to Kutendereza and just sat, sit for an extra five minutes for this video, and then we will bring it to a close. To Kutendereza, yes.
Yesu, Yesu, oh, only one Aguandiga, oh, Let's take our seats, please, the control room, act faster. Thank you. Simply applying the law, professionalism, ethics, and integrity, and, and, and get a decision. And whether to collect that decision or not, that is really not an issue. Thank you. 
thank you so much. We want to thank you so much for your contributions. You contributed 6,671,700 shillings and 5 US dollars. Thank you so much. May God bless you. I'll be handing over this money to the family. But we want to thank you all for coming. And we pray that the Lord will bless us as we continue to stand together in prayer. I'll request the choir uh, to lead us in a recession of him. Thank you. Also have a uh, service tomorrow morning in Ohio Cathedral, as well as um, and then followed by the funeral uh, uh, tomorrow afternoon. So for those of you who are not familiar with Rebishuri, uh, once you get to Ajip um, Motel, you can find out directions from that area, and it will be on your right hand from Masaka Road. Thank you, and thanks a lot for your patience. Thank you. 